Hey there and welcome to this video about how you can use Firebase along with uh, JavaScript to create a simple web application just to see how it works basically. And this is an update of an official uh, Firecast video made previously and I decided to make this because uh, things have changed a little bit in Firebase, how you use it. So let's uh, dig right in here. Uh, first we have to uh, visit the Firebase console and we can find this on uh, consolefirebasegoogle.com and this will uh, show you this web page here and you need to be logged in with one of your accounts and uh, then we create a project first and we select a name for this test JS Firebase web app and that seems to be okay and we Firebase is asking us if we want to use Google Analytics for this project and uh, that includes Crashlytics and cloud messaging and A-B testing among other, other things, cloud functions. It is not really that relevant to this small demo project here, but if you have a, a real world application, maybe a mobile app, it can come into handy to know if, why your mobile app crashed, for instance, uh, to have Crashlytics enabled for that. But we're just going to disable it and hit create project. So now Firebase is going to create this this new Firebase project and uh, actually Firebase is not just a database it's a complete development stack that you can use to um, to host your applications you can also use cloud functions to do uh, server-side code and um, a lot of other cool things. So now we can see that our project is ready now and we can hit continue and we get this panel yeah we got new features that's all right so we have uh, a whole bunch of things here. Uh, development pane, we have quality, analytics, and grow. And we also have settings. And then we have this panel here where we can actually use Firebase for iOS and Android and also the web. So there are, and also Unity. And there are official uh, API and SDKs for that. So you decide whatever you want to use. Uh, if we go to develop, we can see we have authentication database and storage and hosting functions and machine learning kit and it is a whole development stack or or development platform that you can use to um, to kind of provide the back end for your web application or mobile but we're going to do this we're going to select the web and then we need to register an app i'm just going to say test js and we don't need firebase hosting for this but it could Maybe you need this in other projects. And then we get this uh, information here that this is uh, for the Firebase SDK for the JavaScript. So we need to put this code into our web application. So that includes uh, importing the Firebase app JavaScript include. And we also get us some information about the database and how we connect to that. We have the database URL and some other things. Okay, so we're just going to copy that. We can click on the copy to clipboard and then we hit continue to console so now we have set up the basic firebase and let's see if we can open our favorite editor so we have the editor here and uh, i'm just gonna save this so we just save this onto the desktop let's make a new directory and Okay, so now we have index HTML, and we're going to make some HTML boilerplate. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here, and now we need to actually copy the stuff that we, or paste in the stuff that we copied before. So now we have the, um, the required code for actually connecting to our Firebase database. I'm just going to format this. Oops. Okay, I'm not going to format this. Um, but we need something more because we, we have Firebase app and we need another include, basically. And uh, the other include that we need, and that's the change from previous Firebase versions, is that uh, they have separated some of their functionality in different JavaScript files. So, for instance, the database. You can include Firebase uh, dash, uh, database, and that will give you the the required methods for connecting to the database. All right, so we have this 
basic web app setup with Firebase here now. And if we should make a small demo how this works, we can start by making an H1 here and we can give it an ID of, we just give it an ID, a big one here. And then we need to, we want to get some information from Firebase and actually output it in this H1 here. So we can see in the code where we are initializing the app with this configuration. Now we need to type in a bit of JavaScript. So we make a variable, we get the big one, get the element by ID and we get big one here, all right. So that's just gonna get the H1 element. Now we need to have a reference to the database. So we use Firebase database and then we need to get a reference to that and then we want to access the element called text so that could be anything whatever we decide and then we uh, instruct firebase or javascript that we want whenever there is a change inside the database because it is a real-time database and when there whenever there's a change uh, we want to put the information into this uh, h1 with a big one here and we have a reference to that so we're going to say value and we're going to take the big one reference or the variable here and get the inner text and set that equal to whoop Okay, so we're gonna get kind of the data from the database whenever there's a change, and then we're gonna take the value from the database and put it into the big one inner text. So that should be, which hopefully it works. Let's see what happens here. If we head back to our, first of all, if we go back to the, to the web page and we launch it in Chrome, we don't get anything right now. And if we, if we take the inspector, So we can see there is actually nothing right now. And if we go to the database in Firebase. So this is a NoSQL database, meaning that it's not a relational database. It is based on either JSON objects or do uh, documents and not tables. Uh, but when we get into the database, we can select between Cloud Firestore and also the real-time database. And um, they are much alike, but the real-time database will support as it says, real-time communication between your web application. Uh, there are small differences between these uh, two databases, and you can check on Google to see see the differences on those. But if we create uh, a new real-time database, we can see that we need to decide if we should start in lock mode or test mode. And lock mode is basically a lockdown where you can't read or write uh, anywhere in your database. So this is a very good uh, way of making it private, so you can't do anything, basically. Uh, if we want to debug or test a little bit, just uh, development, we can do test mode. So this is the opposite. That's going to allow basically everyone to read or write to our database. So we're going to do this here, as it is only a demo app. So we have this, and again, we get this warning that uh, they're defined as public, our rules, so anyone can steal data, basically, modify or delete. So you should clearly think about the security rules if you have a production database here. Okay, but if we go in here, we can create a new a new node here, and we recall that we did texts. Oh, we did, did texts, so this is the reference that we're looking for, or, the, or the, the child node. So we need to create a text, and let's just do awesome real time or something like this, hit enter. So now we made a simple entry, key value entry into our database. And if we refresh this one here, we get some data. And if we try to realign these, whoop, if I can force Chrome to do this, I don't know. So we can see here that it is 
it is actually updating live when we change some of the data, okay? And let's say you were using PHP or something uh, more traditionally, then you would need to refresh your browser to get the update, but not right here. Okay, so this is basically a really, really short introduction to how you can actually set up Firebase with uh, JavaScript, make a really simple web application using Firebase, but there's a whole much more to this uh, awesome development platform. All right, thanks for watching. Have fun with this. Bye-bye.